well let's let's uh let's start with this lawsuit uh that's going on uh 550 women are suing uber for assault um so i know you know a little bit more about this i i read a couple of uh, things on it this is something that was brought uh you know brought forward a couple weeks ago actually so it's a couple weeks old um but yeah it's uh it's interesting to see uh it's mostly because of the um safety report that came out um or at least it's kind of i guess in line with it it might not be tied together at all but um you know the the safety report from uber just came out recently as well too um so yeah 550 women are suing uber for assault um yeah there's more to come from what i hear uh, at least mm-hmm. a few hundred more um so it's a class action so you know um i mean uber is no stranger to lawsuits right so oh, no. god knows how god knows how many they have at every level state federal whatever it is um In- but international I think too international every which way possible so god knows what their legal bills are that's maybe that's one way not making money i mean just pay lawyers <laughs> um but um yeah after i mean we did the special on the safety report right um honestly the numbers hadn't changed that much i mean from 2017 18 to 2019 to 2020 where 2020 was basically a dead year for a ride share numbers stayed exactly the same you know so me it's like uh, percentage rates yeah yeah, it's very similar like very similar so so all the all the safety tools introduced in the app for the passengers and the driver like follow my ride you know uh, the 911 button all that stuff it seems like it is what it is because the the right counts are basically you know they they also have grown by the way so we have to give you know that a little bit of an attention um there were more trips in 2019 2020 than 2017 2018 but not huge numbers um mm. so you know look one assault is bad enough 550 women suing and you know i'm surprised that you know being a mag- major lawsuit this did not get too much play in the media you know you know how the media embellishes all these bad news things right this was like mm-hmm. a little snippet and it came and went either uber pr departments did an amazing job pushing it under the rug or i don't know i thought this would have gotten more play um but i think maybe this... it's just the, because it's the initial aspect it's not you know hit yeah. court a court system yet or you know i, I don't think it's going to go into arbitration um, no, because, no. Uh, well, well uber is going to do what they do with every lawsuit they'll drag it out right. And then they'll settle for some massive settlement. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, I hear at least a couple to 300 more women are about to come forward and be added to the list. So the high, the high, longer the list goes or the higher the numbers of women coming forward. Um, mm-hmm. And this is probably, this is not only women, by the way, right? I mean, there's some men in there probably too. Mm-hmm. And we also I'm have like- to think, we also have to think, you know, drivers are also getting sexually assaulted. This is just for passengers. Yeah, there may be, there, there may be, yeah. If it was just, is it just passengers? Just passengers. Just, pa- just passengers. So there may mm-hmm. be another one coming from female drivers or even male drivers, as we did with the special, right? Um, mm-hmm. The male sexual assaults went up uh, to 19% from 7% from the previous safety as, report. You mean as right. victims? Yeah, yeah, as victims. So I'm sure that number is going to be as big, if not bigger than this number. So mm-hmm. uh, on the driver's side, I mean. So we'll see. I mean, I'm sure they'll drag it out and settle it at some point in a couple of years or whatever it's going to be. Um, but ultimately, safety on both ends is a big, big, big concern. And we're going to touch upon that subject going forward on this uh, episode you know what can honestly what can uber do because they are not in the car these yeah. things are, are so fluid they're happening on on you know on a i mean at a pace that even law enforcement can't catch up right if something is happening mm-hmm. you call push the button on your uber app called 911 like we talked with Eddie Doyle, you know, that lady pushed a button on 911. They didn't find her dead body for three hours later in Pittsburgh, right? Yep. So to me, it's like the or the on the Lyft platform, you have the ADP button, right? Which is a, a major national uh, security company. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you can do other than yeah, we talked with Eddie like last week. Um, 
you're on your own, man. You got to watch out exactly. for yourself. If shit's going sideways, you got to pull over, grab your keys, grab your phone in a lighted place and get the heck out of Dodge and mm-hmm. and then let the chips fall where they may. You know, yeah, yeah the exactly. passenger can complain mm-hmm. and say, hey, guys, was a, you know, this and that. But the activation versus life, a tough choice. Uh, I take life any day over the activation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree with you right there. I mean, like, the biggest thing is they could put all these tools in place when it comes to if something's happening. Yeah. But the time that it takes for something to happen when you press the button for other people to come it, it, it's a right. lifetime essentially there right. and yeah you gotta you know you can only do so much when it comes to, to these companies when it like something actually happening at the moment yeah. um you can do things for the onboarding process you can make it easier for um people to um have identification uh just on hand so then like if there's a ride that's going on uh they know who's in the car and yeah. they can uh, let law enforcement know. The other thing is working with law enforcement. They have the dashboard for law enforcement, but law enforcement has no idea about it for the most part. Yeah. Um, unless they've had issues with uh, Uber or Lyft before. Um, so yeah. that's one thing too. Like the communication between the companies and law enforcement is horrendously bad, even yeah. though they have the tools available. Um, but still, you know, if if all the information is not being collected from a passenger, or a passenger's you know friend who gets in the car or whatever well something like that then um you know you really got to pay attention to and um when it comes to to both drivers and riders because again it's about 50 percent of the time something's happening um whether you know it's driver on on passenger or passenger on driver it's 50 percent of the time so we got to focus on both you know the biggest thing is if you're a passenger um and you don't feel comfortable you know there's plenty of tools that you can do uh, or, or things that you can do. Same thing as drivers. There's plenty of things that you can do, um, whether you have stuff on hand that maybe the companies don't want you to have, but for you, for your protection, for your safety, that, that's kind of your call. Um, and I mean, also, yeah, the, I mean, I, I, you know, I use the, uh, if I don't, you know, I, I get a sketchy passenger in the car and, you know, you know, you can read the room after doing it for five, six years, you know, what kind of trip that's going to be when the passenger walks in. Um, I uh, automatically turn on my follow my ride, you know, it goes to my family, right? So they know for that ride, at least w- what's happening. And it also goes to law enforcement. So to me, it's like the tool is decent, but I think the driver is at a little bit more of a disadvantage when it comes to those yeah. using those tools, because number one, you're freaking driving. You don't mm-hmm. want to go hit something while you're panicking and looking for a button or this and that. I feel like the passenger has more of an advantage. If they're under only, assault, or you know, because that, they're yeah. behind you, you're facing yep. forward, or exactly. even if they're next to you, you're still facing forward. So, yeah, yeah drivers are are definitely more vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's another most, gripe, the by the way, car. Chris. That, that's another gripe I have with a lot of passengers. You know, when you pull up some sometimes, and your pickup point is on the left, but then you pull up on the right because the app didn't give you the exact pin location, right? Hmm. So you have this passenger walk across the street. There's, you know, on a residential area and open your door, the passenger door behind you and they sit right behind you. I hate yeah. that. <laughs> if female, female, not to a point, because I think actually that's a good point for female passengers. Sit behind the driver passenger side as opposed to the other side. So maybe, you know, if the driver has is a bad apple and is going to do something, it cannot reach easily, you know, go behind the head. But I have sometimes these big guys sit right behind me, and I'm like, "Bro, no." Yeah. Can you? I, I always like, tell oh, them. Can you move up a little bit? No. Yeah, I, I always, I always tell them. <laughs> so you know, they're right I, there. You got so much more room. Go there. <laughs> yeah, go there. Go to the right side, buddy. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream. Show me the money club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.